Okay. We should be all right, guys. We're gonna get started. Welcome everyone online. Welcome in person. This is uh, Dr. Travis from Woodbury Spine Wellness Center. Today's topic is uh, how to bulletproof your immune system, which is a very relevant topic today. Um, so we'll kind of hit on the COVID virus and what should you be doing currently? What do you do to prevent it? Um, what's the proactive if you do end up being tested positive? Um, we'll answer a lot of those questions here today. Um, but let's just start with the basics. Um, your immune system, which is probably the most fundamental system in our human body. Um, it's what controls all of our defense mechanisms. So that leads us to, you know, what exactly is the immune system? We'll get the next slide. Oh, oh click. There. So what is immunity? So immunity is basically a set of defense body mechanisms against foreign bodies, infectious agents. Um, it's, it's a pretty complex system that's really divided into two parts. So there's the innate immunity and then the adaptive immunity. So innate immunity is like what you're born with. It's like the first reaction immunity. Um, it's you know, present in all living beings. Um, it attacks you know, the external, the abnormal um, agents that gets represented in our body. Um, and it's nearly immediate, you know, against any pathogen that really enters the bloodstream or respiratory tract, things like that. Um, it, it really signals any threat that has invaded our bodies. Um, and then it'll send out a bunch of reactions to, okay, what do we need to do with this? What do we have to um, do to fight this you know, foreign object that may harm us? Um, so that with the mobilization of the other compartments of the system. So you know, white blood cells, immune antibodies, things like that. Then there's the adaptive immunity. Um, um, this adaptive immunity is really what, like, how do you build antibodies against a certain virus, right? So this actually takes a few days for your body to really remember that code. Um, and that's where people will say, like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm immune to it now because now your body has built up that adaptive immunity. Um, and this is really what we want to kind of uh, preach to a lot of people is uh, being adaptive. And that's really what it means to be healthy. Um, can, you know, is your immune system boosted enough to adapt to, the, to whatever you're exposed to? So let's go deeper into the innate immunity. Um, like I said, your inborn uh, immunity, it's your body's fast acting response team. Um, innate immunity is the natural protection that we are born with and our first line of defense to combat infection. Um, upon detecting infection, our innate response acts very quickly to try to flush out that invader by producing extra mucus. You know, a lot of people get up that, um, that fever. Basically what your body is doing is saying, we need to get rid of this. What do we? What mechanisms do we have internally, autonomically, to kill that thing? Right. So let's say COVID. Well, that's why we're checking for fevers. Um, if you have a fever, it's trying to kill off that virus that might be attacking certain areas of the body. Um, so fever is actually a good thing. It's actually trying to uh, use your body's natural defense mechanisms to to burn that off. The extra mucus, you know coughing the mucus or your sinuses, things like that. Again, that's white blood cells. That's, that's trying to isolate and then basically eat anything that um, our bodies don't really necessarily want. So we can go deeper into exactly like which cells in the body is this, um, uh, represent, but understanding, you know, there's many different types of cells and they have different functions. Uh, so the macrophage, you know, first line of defense, you know, these are the non-antigen specific um, gatekeepers of the adaptive immunity. Um, but basically, um, macrophages are what eat, eat away, um, you know, certain uh, dead cells and, and viruses and kind of, again, try to mobilize them, try to stabilize them. Um, dendritic cells with the neurological system, natural killer cells, they basically are like black hawks, right? They, they're going to fly to that area and they're going to basically touch it and kill it. Uh, so we want um, good functioning um, white blood cells to be able to fight these uh, different uh, virus uh, infections off. 
And then you have the adaptive immunity, so that's exactly what your memory and body remembers. You know, chicken pox, let's say, there's another, um, you know, your body remembers that you've had chicken pox, so then you don't necessarily get it over and over and over. You, you have built the antibodies towards them, and that's the B and the T lymphocytes that do that. So the antigen specific memory. Um, and this could be true for COVID. You know, and you want to you want to build those antigens within those B and T lymphocytes. Okay, really important issue right now. Um, as everybody step inside, you know, we're not as active as we used to be. Most common morbidities of COVID nineteen and most diseases. Um, so basically, uh, when you have metabolic syndrome, which is a combination of many um, illnesses, blood pressure, you know, blood glucose, obesity, uh, you know, your visceral body fat, your weight. Um, a lot of these um, core morbidities are going to increase your chance to have poor out outcomes if you do end up getting um, the COVID-19. So this study basically looked at uh, a, a variety of, I think it was like 400 and some page, uh, patients from April um, to June, and they basically showed that patients who got COVID with uh, like a comorbidity, or you could say metabolic disease, had basically 50% worse outcomes and had to go, you know, 50% more had to go on ventilators, 50% more died, 50% more had to do some kind of uh, intense acute, you know, intervention, you know, um, and, and that's what we don't want to do. We want to uh, be able to reduce our, um, our chances for having to go through a lot of those. So you can, you can kind of see um, some of these big risk factors. So if one of those look like that may pertain to you, um, then you would um, want to be proactive about um, trying to do some of that stuff naturally. So hypertension, or, you know, uh, again, overweight, um, blood sugar regulation, um, again, heart disease, respiratory um, diseases and asthma, um, kidney, kidney diseases, you know, sleep, sleep apnea was on there. So um, that's a lot, of, a lot of people out there that have sleep apnea. Um, decrease your, your oxygen saturation at night. So what do we do? Eight ways to support a strong immune system. There's so many different things out there in the world right now that tell you um, this will increase your immune system, you know, you know, supplements and, you know, foods and, you know, exercise. And, you know, we don't really hear a lot of that right now. Uh oh. That's weird. One second, technical difficulties. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. We're going to report it. <laughs> I don't think they liked what we were talking about. You probably said COVID too many times. I freaked out. Yeah, we're going to say <laughs> something like Corona. All right, just jumping back on one second. We're talking about eight ways to support the immune system. So this is stuff that we should be hearing um, from all the major medical health experts. What we, you know, actually giving us a little bit of hope, control, how to, you know, support this. Um, so these are some, um, you know, top ways that you can really do it in a, in, in your own time, in your own, you know, um, your your own ability to kind of help. Give yourself the best, um, best defense. Okay, we're back. Awesome. So eating better for health. So you know, nutrition, right? What are you consuming? Are you consuming high processed, convenient sugar, you know, sugar foods and um, you know, oxidized oils? Um, those things are going to really decrease your ability, your immune system. So we want to ingest proper minerals, vitamins, right? Zinc's a huge one, selenium, iron, copper, folic acid, vitamins A, B, C, E, all have immunological you know, um, responses. It has immuno immunological um, considerations. So keeping, you know, eating your fruits and vegetables, you know, having a diverse um, food plate, basically, um, will be able to get all different types of vitamins and minerals. 
Um, this comes straight out of Harvard, uh, these um, recommendations. So <clears throat> to make it clean, eating a priority, um, there's a couple guidelines that you can go by. So wild smash fish, okay, smash stands for sardines, mackerel, anchovy, salmon, and then uh, herring. So those are basically the small fish. Okay, small fish have low metal content. Um, so having those big fish, swordfish, even tuna can have a little higher mercury, mercury content. Um, Plant-based diet, again, um, enhancing your um, gut health, fruits, vegetables, grass-fed meats, okay, grass-fed meats, not corn-fed or grain-fed. Um, those are going to be pro-inflammatory type meats to consume. Um, so that's a huge one. High fiber, so getting enough fiber in the diet, again, normal digestive system is a huge one. Majority of our immune system actually is through the gut. Um, so through what we eat and it's through, um, you know, how our, um, you know, there's a lot of neurological connections through the gut and the brain. Um, it's basically the second brain, they call it. Then we got nuts, seeds, chicken soup. Why chicken soup? The broth. The broth, right. You know, a good, a good fatty broth. You know, today I see broths that say fat free. That's not the broth you want. You want to get the bone marrow. That's where all the proper nutrients are. So fatty bone broth, soups, you know, this time of year is perfect for winter. So load up on that. Make your own if you, if you can. Get enough sleep. Huge one. You know, are, is, are, you getting, are you getting enough sleep throughout the day? Sleep is important for your immunological recovery. So that's really the time where your body can focus on recovering. Um, sleep enhances the immune defense by using the nervous system to communicate with the immune system. So when you go to sleep, think about it. Your senses are diminished quite a bit. So your brain and your nervous system doesn't have to focus so much on, okay, I need to not slip on that ice. I need to stay warm. I need, I'm hungry. Uh, it has all of these inputs where now it's not distracted when you're sleeping. And so you can actually focus on building up those white blood cells, um, again, all these defense mechanisms, things we're talking about, increasing, you know, decreasing the heart rate, um, increasing cerebral spinal fluid, all those things enhance basically um, recycling of all those toxins that we accumulate throughout the day and all those stress hormones that we accumulate throughout the day. Um, especially right now during the pandemic, what would you know? Um, we're all stressed out, you know, politics, we got pandemic, we have a lot of things going on right now. Um, what you do have control over is your health. So this is one that we can um, really enhance. So long lasting immunological memory comes from sleeping. Um, this is where they really have the proper signaling, again, so they're not distracted by doing other things. Um, the, the immune system is very time oriented, so that's why we have sleep cycles. Deep sleep, REM sleep, light sleep, all of these have a, a particular purpose on different brain waves. Um, again, for all these different reactions and me uh, mechanisms. Sleep allows your body to send energy-rich fuels to the immune system. Have a sleep routine. Seven to eight hours is great. That's your goal. Stay calm, don't stress, right? Stress is another huge one. Um, chronic stress creates a lot of inflammation. Um, stress down-regulates the immune system. So sympathetic nervous system, that's what stress is. Your fight or flight response. How do you reduce that? Well, you activate your parasympathetic nervous system. How do you do that? Look at that picture. That's probably the perfect way <laughs> to activate your parasympathetic system. Sunrise, sunset, so he's getting his vitamin D. Fresh air, top of the mountains. Altitude. He looks like he's in pretty uh, relaxed mode right there, right? And he's touching the ground, earthing, right? He's, he's literally connecting with earth or the world in some way. That's the most optimal way to basically calm yourself. Go walk, walk in the woods, go outside, get fresh air. Don't be cooped up in your apartment 12 hours a day and then be on the news worrying about what's going on. That's, you're not going to get anywhere doing that. Um, so parasympathetic system, how do we activate? Many ways to do it. Chronic stress can activate latent viruses. Okay, 
We don't want to. We don't want to wake up nasty viruses in our system because viruses do stick in your nervous system. They can stay recumbent in um, the ganglion of your nerves. So we want to. We want to make sure that we don't reactivate some of those things. Immune system in older people isn't as responsive um, to stress as young people. So as we age, again, we got to be more careful. Being calm can change the state. Can uh, change your immune cell signaling, and then meditation. Four, seven, eight breathing is uh, in time to stress is super effective. So, I mean, you can use this type of breathing. You can, you know, there's that call map you can see right there that you can use. Um, there's many different breathing techniques you can use. Just choose one that you like and stick to it. Just do it. That's the key. Can you do it consistently? Um, hold your, it's basically breathe in slowly, hold your breath, breathe out slowly, hold your breath. You can, you can, you know, the, the timing of it, four segments, you can do four, 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 seven, eight. You can do uh, Wim Hof. There's lots of different types of it. Just do some kind of breath work. Do it with your meditation. Just combine all these at the same time. Even, even, even 10 minutes a day is super effective. Start with one minute a day. If you can't do 10 minutes, do one minute a day until you get to 10 minutes a day. It's, I mean, you got to start somewhere. So it's, what path are you on? Are you going in the right direction? That's what we care about. Here comes the sun. I can see it. Vitamin D. Wow, vitamin D is important. Out of all the out of all the blood work that we've done on all the patients here, that is the number one that's super low on everybody. Everybody thinks they they get enough vitamin D. Midwest, you're notorious for having low vitamin D. Vitamin D is not just a vitamin. It's a hormone. It regulates so many different um, immune responses, and hormone regulation, everything in your body. I mean, it's super important vitamin. You need to make sure that you're, you're really supplementing with this. It's very difficult to get through your, your nutrition, and, you know, unless you're some kind of nutritionist and know exactly what you need to do. Um, you don't need to get sunburned to get vitamin D. We don't need to worry about that right now in November. But um, you know, try to get five to 15 minutes of sunlight per day, even if it's right now, it's better than nothing. Again, it's good for your circadian rhythm to look at that sun. Um, it can help with vitamin D production, you know, shown to reduce depression. So that's another um, you know, researched um, result of vitamin D supplement depression. 40 IUs, so that's kind of the measurement of vitamin D's IU um, per 10 pounds of body weight for daily supplementation. So that's kind of a good just kind of baseline to go off of, you know, again, know your levels, know what your blood work looks like. Um, if you're at, you know, I, I would like you around 50, 60, 70, I, um, you know, score of vitamin D in, in your blood. Um, if you're, if you're at like 10 and 20, we got to really bump you up. You know, I would, I would recommend, you know, up to 5,000 I use until we got to normal levels. Um, Vitamin D supplementation to prevent, prevent acute respiratory tract infections. There's a systematic review, meta-analysis of individual participant data. So again, well-studied vitamin, well-known to help with respiratory issues. Hashtag coronavirus, right? Um, trouble coughing, breathing, right? Vitamin D. Vitamin D associated with COVID deaths were like through the roof. Almost everybody, almost pretty much everybody who died from COVID had low vitamin D levels. So we got to make that correlation. Uh, vitamin D supplementation is safe, protected against acute respiratory infection. It's super hard to overdose on vitamin D. I won't even worry about it. It's almost impossible. Sun lamps, they're great. So those are good to, again, that's more circadian rhythm stuff. So it's basically triggering you to wake up and things like that. Um, we, I, I have one. You turn it on in the morning or the um, start of the day. Yeah, those are great. It's a good red light kind of a therapy. Red light's not a good one, too. You yeah, haven't looked into that. Alcohol. Again, we're going back to the stress. More stress, more people tend to drink. Alcohol won't kill the virus. It's not a disinfectant, okay? It actually does quite the opposite. So... Alcohol disrupts your immune system. It does lower your ability to fight off any infection, really. Um, 
alcohol ne ne negatively impacts your innate and adaptive immunity, so both. It's because the ethanol really destroys your gut. That's really what it comes down to. And your gut has a ton of uh, immunological properties. So it kills the microbes in your gut, you know, which are crit critical. And, um, you know, again, just because you have more time at home, lockdowns and we're at home more and staying away from friends and family does not give you an excuse to drink more. You need to really make sure you monitor it um, and you know find other means to support the immune system. Number six, your brain controls everything. It does. It's our master powerhouse, including your immune response. Okay, innate and adaptive immunity are coordinated by your brain and contribute to long-term immune memory. So again, you want to be able to remember the things that are, have been a foreign um, invader of your body so that you can attack against it in the future if you have to. You know, there, there's, there, there might be a different strand next time. We wanna make sure that we can fight that off to our best ability instead of being completely confused and lost. What is this thing? And then your body goes into what we call a cytokine storm. And that's what you hear about with the super inflammation in the lungs and you know, heart rate, blood pressure goes up, and that's how people are getting pretty damaged from this virus, okay? The immune and nervous system are connected and control each other through the autonomic system. So brain, spine, your brain and your central nervous system live in your skull and your spine. So do you, we wanna maintain best brain and spinal cord function through natural means. Chiropractic is a great, great option for that. So if you are not getting chiropractic care, this is your time. Supplements, so many questions about supplements. Which supplement should I take? Supplements are great. You know, they're not, they're not cures. They're, you can't cure, you're not gonna cure anything. I mean, think about it as, what can I do to optimize my immune system to its best ability? Okay, and supplement can help with that. Um, vitamin C, known antioxidant. Okay, zinc, super well studied mineral to help with the immune system. Mixed mushroom complex. Okay, we're talking you know, chaga, shiitake. We're talking all those mushrooms that you know of. Lion's mane. Okay, just to get a, get a complex um, amount of those mushrooms, super good for the immune system. Um, I mean, those fungi, they're our friends. Um, vitamin D, K2, we mentioned that. Probiotics, the spore probio, that's the one we're representing. Um, again, we're talking about gut health. So having proper um, probiotics, proper gut flora helps enhance the immune system. Liposomal glutathione, another, another antioxidant, okay? Really helps um, boost the immune system. Really focuses on your mitochondria, that one. So making sure that you have enough um, energy. Okay, beta-glucans, that's found in like oats. So having like steel-cut oats and stuff. Um, helps keep blood pressure down. Omega-3 fatty acids, so anti-inflammatory fats. Again, we talked about the smash fish. They all have that omega-3 fatty acid. And then elderberry. Elderberry has been shown to kind of um, encase viruses. Doesn't like necessarily boost your immune system. It just kind of encases the virus so it doesn't necessarily spread or become so much so more uh, as active. So we do have elderberry um, juice and elderberry syrup. Those things are gonna be great. This is a well-known practice, washing your hands. Science says <laughs> washing your hand can prevent about 20% of respiratory infections. Think about it. Our hands touch a lot of stuff. And then we touch our faces. We have the sniffles, right? Or, you know, or whatever, washing our faces, we touch our face a lot. And or we have masks on. You know, and we have to readjust it. Again, you're touching your face again. Try to avoid that all the precautions. Um, and if you do, just you gotta make sure you wash your hands quite a bit. Okay, Antibi uh, antibiotics often are prescribed unnecessarily for these health issues. 
Um, reducing the number of these infections by washing hands frequently helps prevent the overuse of antibiotics, the single most important factor leading to antibiotic resistance around the world. Hand washing can also prevent people from getting sick with germs that are already resistant to the antibodies and that can be difficult to treat. Okay, what should we do? How do we stop the spread? Help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases like the COVID coronavirus 19. Wash your hands, first and foremost. That one's easy, you know, not only for um, corona, but the many germs that you'll acquire by touching elevator buttons, doorknobs, somebody else's hands, things like that. Um, or the dirtiest thing on the earth, right? Money. Money's the dirtiest. I mean, look at the restaurants, right? You can't even pay with cash anymore because it, they understand that nobody cleans their dollars um, that can be spread. Um, stay at home if you're sick. Same with your children. Again, just reducing the number as much as you can. But if you stay at home, don't just stay inside. You know, stay go in your yard and stuff too. If you want to chill, go for it. But practice social distancing, avoiding activities that have large crowds. Again, just giving people space. Don't touch your face or pick your nose. It only contains what it always does, bad things. But if you must, at least wash your hands. So disinfect, you know, surfaces, you know, cover your sneezes. You know, these are things that we all knew before. It's just, it's like reminders. We just, I mean, it's no, it's no different than if we had a regular flu. I mean, we're gonna do these exact same practices. So just being smart and being, um, being courteous. Keep well hydrated with water or fluid of your choice. Okay, not Corona beer. <laughs> it's not named after the virus. It's not gonna, you're gonna get it from drinking Corona. Remember that unless you're old and ill, you'll likely recover fully, okay? It's like, even if you're a core morbidity and you're over 65 and even, and let's say you meet all those, um, you know, comorbidity biomarkers and you get COVID, you still have about a 90% chance of recovery, which is pretty good. 90% chance. If you are young and healthy and have no issues, you're at like 98.9% .9 chance you recover it. So this is, you know, this isn't a huge, I mean, we're, 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 being, we're being very fearful of something that's um, has a low percentage of death. <laughs> Just take your, take your precautions. Um, yeah, you have better odds crashing your bike or driving a car or making a bad investment than dying from corona. Um, so again, the odds are not very good. Rest, relax, live healthy. Stress, lack of sleep, poor nutrition, and poor hygiene will weaken your immune system. Get enough sleep, eat well, and wash your hands. Again. Obviously, please follow us on uh, 8 Weeks Wellness, Woodbury Spine. We've got the links. Tonight's offer, everybody online, everybody in person, this is the offer that we are um, doing tonight as a part of um, you know, supporting your immune system. We get a lot of questions on what supplements you can do to prevent, your, you know, um, prevent from attracting it, or even if you have it, how do you recover faster, or how do you stay optimal at all times? You know, so this is our supplement bundle um, that we're going to give out an offer. Um, so if you're not a, yet a patient at Woodbury Spine, um, you see that first offer, the 159, that includes a full wellness score. Um, and if you don't know what that wellness score is, it's basically a full assessment of your health. Um, X-rays, you know, body composition analysis, movement tests, neurological testing, um, full history, um, just, you know, goal oriented, um, evaluation. And then of course, someone bundle, we have vitamin D, we have a, immune support, which is a, a lot of variety of different minerals and immune supporting, um, components, liposomal C. So liposomal basically under the tongue. So it's a liquid form, um, super potent, um, 
high doses of vitamin C have been shown to really help with the immune system. And then that ultrabiotic defense, which is that probiotic. We're gonna add a 30 minute wellness consult and um, health coach um, call, um, basically um, to how to use the supplements, to what kind of nutrition plan should you be on to really help with this. Um, really 30 minutes to really dive into um, an expert and, and understand what is the best practice going forward. Um, so you do have a game plan. You know, we, we want an action plan going forward if, um, you know, if you have suspicion or worries about I mean, your health and um, what might happen in the future. Again, you can see that same um, offer for current patients. And um, all I need to do is text immune to 651-731-0505. That's the office. And we'll basically get in touch with you if you send us that text and um, start scheduling your appointments and get you um, locked and loaded with those supplements and a wellness score if you need to. Um, we do offer an elderberry syrup uh, with echinacea. Um, echinacea, again, is another enhancing um, herb. $30 for that guy when I add that. Um, I love that stuff. Um, it's super good. I mix it with like carbonated water. It's, it's amazing. It's like an elderberry carbonated water drink. Um, I might do that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> about it. Yeah. So if you want to add that, uh, I definitely recommend the elderberry syrup as well. Um, and we'll be offering, you know, this deal up until Wednesday. So um, please text us by Wednesday. It's going to get in touch with you. Or you know, they can stop on the front desk. You are stopping at the front desk, you know, and see us in person. You know, we're... We're dropping the price. I know you're saving about 30 bucks. Um, yeah, a little more than 30 bucks for um, this, this kind of deal. So please, please get in touch with us. If you have any other specific questions, um, feel free to reach out. Let's see if there's you can any text questions. us and uh, get in contact with us. Any, any questions for me? Oh, we got a question. Uh, what about the mental aspect of immunity? If I live in a positive lifestyle, adhering to the objectives describing such as exercise, sleep, supplements, et cetera, will thinking healthy keep me healthy? Yeah, so great question. We'll leave it anonymous. <laughs> but basically, mental health goes right back to that stress. Behavior, you know, um, what are you putting in your schedule? You know, what are you scheduling on your day, is it just work or is it self work? You know, are you putting meditation in there? What kind of stress relieving techniques are you committing to? Um, you know, mental health is a extremely difficult issue right now um, because of the loss of connection, the social aspect of it. Um, and, you know, just the state of where we are today. Um, so obviously, if you, you, know, you need extra support, again, I'm gonna go right back to that wellness consult and health coach call. You know, those individuals are gonna be really good at kind of navigating you to a uh, technique to um, help deal with stress. And that's really what mental health is gonna come from is stressful either situations or previous traumas. Um, and we need to, we wanna address those things first because if you are in a you know, depressed state or maybe not so happy state, um, it's gonna be very difficult to, to implement a lot of these practices, the exercise. So you, again, we gotta get our mind right first and foremost um, before we start implementing like proper healthy behaviors. Um, great question. I don't think there's any more. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much.